Hello, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone, students of SMK Bagan Jaya. How are you today? I teach you hope you are fine and already take your breakfast and be prepared with your module as we are going to continue with our lesson today on question 8 to question 13. Okay, so without any further delay, let us go to the first question for today, question number 8. Okay, uh, who are with us today? Can you say hi in the chat room so I can see your presence? Okay, so class, this is a question, uh, this is a slide on question eight. Okay, so please be, uh, as I say just now, please get ready with your module and your calculator as well. Uh, I hope you all have tried this question before. Uh, question 18, uh, sorry, question 8 until question uh, 13 for today if we have enough time, okay? So question 8, uh, you are given diagram 12.1, okay? It shows a wave moving towards a harbour, all right? So this is the harbour. You can see the wave is propagating from this direction. Okay, good morning, Jin Hui. Hello. Okay, so uh, what do we have in question A? First, what is the meaning of diffraction? One mark. Okay, so what is the meaning of diffraction? So diffraction refers to spreading or bending. The keyword is spreading or bending of wave when it passes through an obstacle or a small opening. So this is diffraction, one mark. Spreading or bending of wave around an obstacle or small opening. So in this diagram, what do we have? Do we have an obstacle or small opening? Yes, we have a small opening here. You, you can see the wave is spread after it passed through this opening. Okay, and then B, you have to draw the pattern of the wave after pass through the entrance of the harbour. So if you look in diagram 12.1, uh, actually you can see the pattern of the wave after passing through the harbour. So you just redraw in the uh, provided spaces. So we draw the pattern is a circular wave, okay, where the wavelength is constant. Okay, for diffraction, no changes in wavelength, only the shape of the wave changes. Okay, initially, it is a plane wave after passing through the entrance. So it changed shape into a circular wave as seen in diagram 12.1. So one mark for your drawing. Okay, next, question C. Okay, the entrance is now made wider, okay, to allow more ships to enter the harbour. So this will give an effect to the wave passing through and also to the harbour. So what effect you can see on the wave passing through the entrance? What happened to the wave passing through the entrance if the size of the entrance is wider? Uh, so what do you say? C1 allocates two marks. And then second, what will be the effect on the harbour? What will happen to the harbour when the entrance is made to be wider? So the answer is, number one, first you can say uh, the wave will be less diffracted, okay, less spread. So diffraction will reduce. Second, its energy will be increases. So the wave that enter a wider entrance will enter with a higher energy. So what will be the effect to the harbour? So wave with higher energy definitely will cause more damage to the harbour. Or you can say it can cause a soil erosion okay, to the harbour. So this is the effect when the gap is designed to be wider. All right. Okay, then in question D. Okay, now you're given diagram 8.5. It shows propagating of wave from the ocean to the headland. So you can highlight the wave propagate from ocean to headland. The question is explain why the wave pattern label X is different from the wave pattern label Y. So if you look at diagram 8.5, this is where X is. So this is the pattern of the wave show and this is region Y. So this is the pattern of the 
wave. So how we explain this situation? Actually, this one you can find in your module uh, last uh, this year on wave chapter six. Okay, on refraction of water wave. So how do we explain this in order to get two marks? So this is what you can write. At Y, what happened? The wave travel at a uniform speed. Okay, first, since the depth of water here is uniform. Hence, the wave front are straight and parallel to each other where the wavelength is longer. Why wavelength is longer? Because Y is a deeper area. Okay, so the wavelength is longer and the uh, wave travel with straight and parallel wave front. Okay, that is the pattern. Okay, while at X, at X, okay, what happened at X? The water is shallower. Okay, so the wave speed reduced and refraction occurs. And now the wave front are refracted and become closer to each other where the wavelength is shorter okay so this is how we explain the difference in pattern for the wave at region x and region y okay two marks for that okay so uh any anything you would like to ask until this point anyone okay so if you don't have any questions so we move to the next slide now question d2 Okay, now again, uh, we refer to this diagram 8.5. What is the physical quantity shown by two lines labeled Z? So where is Z? So this is label Z. So what is these two lines show? It refers to what? Can you respond? These two lines, it shows what? Okay, the distance between the first line and the second line is called as? Yes, this is what we call as a wavelength. It represents wavelength or you can write lambda, okay, the wavelength. Okay, then question E. Okay, now diagram 8.6. Diagram 8.6, it shows the propagation of wave when it is vibrated at 5 hertz. Okay, now you are given sound wave propagate at a frequency of 5 hertz. So the question is, calculate the speed of the wave. So how to find the speed of the wave class? So what is the formula to calculate speed? What formula we apply to determine speed? So speed is V equal to... Okay, speed is equal to F lambda. Okay, before we apply this equation, look at this diagram 8.6. You have to know how many wavelengths do we have here. So from the first end to the, uh, the next end, the length is 24 cm. And here you can see there are three wavelengths. Okay, lambda 1 is the first wavelength. And then we have lambda 2, the second wavelength. Lambda 3, the, say, uh, the third wavelength. So to find the wavelength, 24 divided by 3. Okay, so where the frequency is 5, so the wavelength is 8 centimeter, which means the speed of the wave is 80 centimeter per second. Okay, 80 centimeter per second. Okay, that goes for question 8. So now we proceed with question 9. Again, a question on wave. Okay, and now we have water wave you are given diagram 9.1 it shows a ripple tank used to produce plane wave and diagram 9.2 show the water wave propagate and strike an obstacle so this is the apparatus to study this case we have an obstacle placed here this is the vibrator and the water which is filled in the tank and diagram 9.2 it shows the incident wave and then the reflected wave, okay, where uh, angle of incidence is labeled as alpha 1 and angle of reflection is labeled with alpha 2, all right? 
So what is the question that follow? First, what is the meaning of angle of incidence? So class, what is angle of incidence? Can you write what is the meaning of angle of incidence? What do you understand? Angle of incidence. What is it? The okay. angle of incidence is angle between okay, the incident ray and the normal. Okay. This is a definition for angle of incidence. Angle between the incident ray and the normal. Right, and then B1. Okay, based on diagram, state the relationship between angle of incidence and angle of reflection. So, look at this diagram. Okay, what can you say about alpha 1 and alpha 2? How do we relate them? Can you respond in the live chat? Anyone? What can you say about alpha 1 and alpha 2? What is their relationship? So, yes, we can say that uh, angle of incidence equals to angle of reflection. Or you can say alpha 1 equal to alpha 2. Okay, use the mathematical symbol. Alpha 1 equal to alpha 2. Angle of incidence equal or same with angle of reflection. Okay? Okay, and then question two, name the law involved. Okay, what is the law involved in this diagram 9.2? So it shows a reflection. So the law is law of reflection. Yes, Vin C, Dylan, it is the same. Or you can say equal. All right? Alpha 1 equal or same with alpha 2. Okay, thank you for responding. Okay, now question C. The frequency of the motor is now increased. Okay, remember this is a reflection. Now we increase the vibrator. We increase the frequency of the motor. So what do you think will happen to the distance between wavefront? Okay, when the vibration is increases, what happened to the distance between wavefront? Is it no changes or the distance increase? Or the distance decrease. Uh, which one? And then C2, how about the speed of wave? Does the speed change or the speed increase or the speed decrease? Okay. So what happened to the distance between wavefront when the frequency increase? What do you say? Class. So the wavefront will be decrease. Okay, when the frequency is increases, you can see the wavefront will be decreases. Okay, while what happened to the speed, uh, the speed of wave is increased. Yes, shorter or decrease. Uh, Dylan, okay, you can write shorter or you can say decrease. Okay. And the speed, the speed will be increased. When the frequency increases, speed will be increases as well. Okay, or you can say higher. Don't say faster. Okay, increase or higher. Okay, next. Okay, now we have a radar system. Okay, it shows a radar system at KLIA. Signals are transmitted from the radar system to determine position of Aeroplane. So you can highlight the uses of this radar system okay, to determine position of aeroplane. Okay, so how in the first diagram you can see this is the wave that is transmitted from the transmitter. And once it hit the body of the aeroplane, it will be reflected back to the receiver. So the receiver will uh, receive the reflected wave from the aeroplane and it can estimate okay the distance of the aeroplane from the radar okay so what do we have uh, this is a long essay question you are given table one uh, you are given choices of p q r and s we have four type of radar system and they give you three characteristic of uh, the wave transmitted 
second is the diameter of the parabolic disc and then the third characteristic you are given the distance of the signal receiver from the center of the parabolic disc so you have to determine or you have to choose the suitable characteristic of a radar system in order to determine the position of the aeroplane okay first type of wave transmitted so this is the uh, choices you are given with you have two options either to use the microwave or to use the microwave so remember for radar system what type of wave we prefer to use microwave or radio wave uh, which one for radar system microwave or radio wave is a better choice so we choose yes we choose microwave okay why we choose microwave this is because it has a high frequency or high energy okay so it can travel further answer is microwave uh chan lishi chan okay are you from bagan jaya or from uh somewhere else oh, which chan is this uh isun is it you chan isun it's not radio wave it is microwave for radar system we prefer to use microwave the reason is microwave have a has a higher frequency or you can say high energy all right second now diameter of parabolic disc okay diameter of parabolic disc so you have two option okay you have 10 5 7 12 remember don't write any figure any number you just write diameter uh longer or shorter okay bigger or smaller or means one chan means one okay so what to say about the diameter of the parabolic disc a bigger diameter or a small diameter which one is a better choice so definitely we choose a big diameter of parabolic disc okay why choose big diameter what is the reason of choosing a big diameter parabolic disc so that we can receive or it can capture more signal okay it can receive or to capture more signal reflected from the aeroplane okay large collect more signal correct Binsi. okay to capture or to collect more signal or to receive more signal okay next Okay, now the distance, uh, this is supposed to be number three, distance of the signal receiver from the center of the parabolic disc. So the signal receiver is the aerial. So where to place the aerial at from the center of the parabolic disc? So you are given two options. Okay, the distance of the signal uh, from the center of the parabolic disc. So either same as the focal length or less than the focal length. So which one we choose? distance same as the focal length or less than the focal length so for this characteristic we choose a distance of signal receiver which has the same length as the focal length what is the reason of choosing this Okay, why you need to choose a distance of signal receiver from the center of the parabolic disc uh, the length is the same as the focal length. Why? Uh, yes, answer is same as focal length. Correct. Very good. Means one. What is your reason of say so? Why do you say so? So that all signal can be focused. Okay. Or can be converged to the receiver. So the signal will be focused or converged to the receiver this is the reason of choosing the same uh, distance with the focal length okay so i hope you are clear with all these choices so by this which radar system is a better choice p q r and s so first we you can tick 
which of this uh, radar system using microwave? So we have two, P and Q. Okay, they are using microwave. Second characteristic, which one has a big diameter? Again, it is P and S. Okay, third characteristic, which one has a, a distance same with the focal length? So we have P and R. So look at all these thick signs. Which one fulfill all three characteristics? So you can see it is P. It uses microwave, it has big diameter, and it has a distance of signal receiver, same as the focal length. So by this, we choose radar system P. Okay, so this is how to verify your final answer. Okay, now number 10, question 10. Okay, diagram 10.1 shows a bat using ultrasonic wave to detect obstacle in front of it. Okay, now again to deal with sound wave, ultrasonic wave. The first question is, what is the meaning of ultrasonic wave? So class, what is ultrasonic wave? Anyone? What is ultrasonic wave? Okay, so what is ultrasonic? It is a sound wave with frequency more than 20,000 hertz. Okay, sound wave with frequency exceeding 20,000 hertz. That is ultrasonic. All right. Okay, next question uh, two, A2. Explain how the ultrasonic wave are used by the bat to detect the distance of the obstacle. So this question for mark for explanation. How the bat using the ultrasonic to detect distance of the obstacle. So it won't hit okay, the wall of the cave or the wall of the stalactite or stalagmite inside the cave. So this is the explanation you can write first. You can say bat detects the distance uh, of obstacle by using ultrasonic sound. Okay, so you state what type of sound wave is used by the bat. So they are using ultrasonic sound. Okay, number two, how? So the bat listen to the echo that reach it. So the bat uh, send the ultrasound so it will be reflect back by the wall of the cape so it will reflect uh, it will receive the echo or the reflected sound wave and then number three so the period okay of the time between sending and receiving the ultrasonic wave is noted so the vet will know either it received uh, the reflect uh, the echo longer or shorter after sending it if longer mean uh, the distance is very far. The distance of the wall of the cave is very far to it. If it receives the echo in a very short period, mean the wall is very close to the bat. Okay, to, uh, to the bat. Sorry. So the this, uh, by this, it can estimate the distance. Okay. The cut ke jauh, dia boleh agak. It can estimate. The wall is uh, further away or very near to the bat. Okay, so it can detect ultrasonic sound uh, until 75 uh, hertz, 75,000 hertz. This is an additional information, mark 5. So the maximum mark for this explanation question is 4 marks. Okay, for each point you write, you uh, shows here it uh, allocate 1 mark and the maximum mark is 4. Okay, so this is how we explain how the bat applies the ultrasonic wave in order to detect or determine distance of obstacle. Okay. Okay, next question B. Uh, this is another application of sound wave. Diagram 10.2, it shows use of a type of wave to obtain an image of a fetus. Okay, a transducer transmits the wave into the womb. And the transducer is moved on a layer of gel applied on the screen of a mother. 
the rebounding echoes from the wave are detected to form a picture of the fetus on the micro, uh, computer monitor. So this is the related diagram you can see. Okay, this is how the condition of the fetus inside the mother's womb. So the question is, by using appropriate physics concept, explain how a clearer image, so our aim is to produce a clearer image of the fetus can be obtained based on the type of wave. So you highlight, okay, first explanation, you must explain type of wave use. Second, characteristic of the wave, okay? And number three, the use of layer of gel okay number three and then name the phenomenon of wave being applied and state another use of the wave okay so this is the guidance you are given in order to write the 10 marks essay for this application questions so first and foremost how what we do as usual you can form your table okay so first form your table of characteristic and explanation okay first they ask you to talk about the type of wave so what is the type of wave we are using in this uh, device so we are using ultrasound okay the type of wave used is ultrasound so why use ultrasound because you can say it is safe no side effect to the fetus or you can say can differentiate between layers of different soft tissues, okay? I believe you learn in biology that the, uh, the mother's womb is uh, consists of uh, many layers. So each of these layers, uh, they have a different uh, soft tissue. Each are uh, made from a soft tissue, multiple layers. So we can, uh, this ultrasound, it can differentiate between layers of different soft tissues. And then the characteristic of the wave. Okay, what is the characteristic of ultrasound? So you can talk about the frequency. Okay, ultrasound has a high frequency wave. Okay, second, you can say about its amplitude. Okay, small amplitude. Or also, you can say it has a high amplitude. For amplitude, both are accepted with a different explanation. Okay, this is a characteristic of wave uh, you can write. First, high frequency. So, how to explain? Uh, so, ultrasound has a high frequency. So, by this, it can penetrate into mother's womb. Okay, the layer, uh, the tissue layer is very thick since it is a multiple layer. So uh, ultrasound with a high frequency can penetrate into all this layer. Or you can say since it has a high frequency, so it won't diffract easily. Okay, it won't diffract easily, does not diffract easily. Second characteristic, you can write small amplitude. Okay. For small amplitude, you can say it does not harm the fetus. Okay, does not harm the fetus. Or if you write high amplitude, which is also accepted, so this is a reason to produce brighter image. Okay, so this is the characteristic of ultrasound wave used in the transducer. Okay, next use of layer of gel so better use a gel or without gel the transducer so normally we use a gel yes okay why use a gel why we must uh, rub a gel on the uh, mother's womb on the layer on the uh, outside the mother's womb before we place the transducer on it so this is to allow Okay, the transducer to move easily on the skin since it will be act as a lubricant. Okay, the layer of gel will act as a lubricant to reduce uh, frictional force. You can say also to reduce friction. Or you can say to help the sound wave transmit into the body. 
Okay, easy for the sound wave to transmit into the body. Since sound wave require medium to be transmitted. So this layer of gel can act as a medium. Okay. Or you can also say produce better sound contact okay, between the transducer and the skin. So any one of these reasons are accepted. Okay, next, phenomenon of the wave here. Okay, so far how many marks we collect? We have collect 8 marks. Okay, you dah kutip 8 maka. Okay, um, mark number one, ultrasound. Mark number two is the reason. Mark number three, high frequency. Mark number four is the reason. Mark number five, either you say small or high amplitude. And mark number six is the reason for either small or high amplitude. Okay, and then uh, mark number seven, yes, by using a layer of gel. And mark number eight is explanation. So phenomenon of wave is to do with mark number nine. There is no explanation for this. Ini tak, you tak perlu explain. Okay. Phenomenon of the wave is reflection. Okay. And then another use of wave. So either then to be used as to get the picture of a fetus inside a mother's womb, where else we can use this ultrasound? In what other purpose we can use this ultrasound at? Can you respond? Ultrasound can use in where? Either then to detect or to determine the image of a fetus inside a mother's womb. Where else? What else we can use this ultrasound for? Anyone? So you can say ultrasound can be used to determine the depth of the sea, okay, or to locate the position of a shoal of fish or to locate the position of a sunken ship, okay. This is another use of ultrasound. Determine depth of the sea, locate position of a shoal of fish for fishermen or either to locate the position of a sunken ship. Okay, uh, MRI. MRI, uh, MRI, we are not using ultrasound. Okay. Okay, any other answer other than William? Okay, so by this, uh, another use in it, this will be your 10 mark. Okay, 10 mark. So 10 mark for these questions. Okay, now we go to question C. Okay, question C, it shows a sheep sending out a pulse of ultrasound to the seabed. Okay, this is an uh, application of sound wave. You can see a sheep sending out a pulse of ultrasound to the seabed. Okay, first, state the wave phenomenon in Vox. Okay, so first state the wave phenomenon involved. So what wave phenomenon involved here? Okay, what wave phenomenon involved here, class? Can you state the wave phenomenon involved here? So the ship is sending a pulse and it will receive back. Okay. The echo. So what phenomenon involved here? This is reflection. Okay, reflection. And then second, explain why the ship use ultrasonic wave. So this is uh, the question similar to the previous one. Why using ultrasonic wave? So what is the advantages of using ultrasonic wave? Two marks. So again, you can say it has a high frequency. Or you can state not diffract easily. Plus, it has a high penetrating power. Yes, we see it is reflection. So it can travel further. Okay, it has a high penetrating power, so it can travel further distance, can travel deep down under the sea bed. Yes, Dylan, correct reflection. 
Okay. And explanation why ultrasonic is used. So you write the characteristic for ultrasonic. So high frequency or not easily diffract. And second, high penetrating power. So it can travel uh, further or easy to focus. All right. So we move to question, uh, uh, the next question, number three. Now you have to calculate the speed uh, if the reflected ultrasound is received 0 0.75 seconds later. So what is the depth of the sea? So in this question, you are asked to determine the depth of the seabed. And given the speed of sound in the seawater is 1500 meter per second, 1500 meter per second. So how to determine depth of the seabed? Okay, this question we used to do before in the... Uh, in school so I hope you have no problem dealing with it how to find the depth of the seabed what is the equation we apply here so the depth of the seabed is given by vt divided by 2 okay v is the speed t is the time divided by 2 okay why divide by 2 since time of sending equal to the time of receiving. So the total time 0 0.75, we divide into 2. Okay. So we just do the substitution. The speed is 1,500. Multiply with the time 0 0.75, divide by 2. So the depth of the seabed is 562.5 meter. Okay. 562.5 meter. So this is... Your first mark, mark number one on the substitution and mark number two is on your final answer. Okay. Okay, next we move to question 11. Okay, still to do with wave. And now we have water wave. Okay, you are given two diagram. Uh, you are given diagram here, 11.1. .1. It shows the side view of two water tanks. Okay, when the motor on the wooden dipper are switched on, the wooden dipper oscillate on the surface of the water and produce water wave. So the diagram on the left, you can see this is the motor connected to the dipper and this is region P. Okay, we, uh, we place a glass plate here to create a shallow region of P. Okay, and then the diagram on the right, we have the same motor and the dipper. And again, we place a thicker glass plate here to create a shallow region Q. So you can see the difference in depth in region P and region Q when you are using glass plate of different thickness. Okay. So diagram 11.2. It shows the aerial view. Aerial view means top view. Okay, we look from above, a top view of the propagation of the wave into region P and region Q. So on the left, this is uh, where the, uh, uh, the wave propagate in the deep region. And this is how the direction of the propagation once it enter the shallow region P. And for the diagram on the right, this is how the initial propagation of the wavelength in the deep region. And this is the changes occur once it passes through a shallow region, Q. Okay, so you can uh, you can look, observe at these two diagrams and see what is the difference between uh, the pattern of the wave or the wavelength in region P and region Q. Okay, so what is the question that follow? First, what is the meaning of wavelength? So class, what is wavelength? What is the meaning of wavelength? So wavelength is distance between two consecutive crests or trough. You can write distance between two consecutive crests or distance between two consecutive trough. Or we can say wavelength is a distance between two points of the same Face on a wave. Same face mean crest and crest or trough and 
trough. Okay, you can write either one of these three answers. Okay, for explanation for the meaning of wavelength. Okay, then we proceed with question two. Okay, now based on diagram 11.1 .1 and 11.2, compare the wavelength. So this is a question on comparison and relationship, five marks. So what you have to compare, first compare the wavelength. Second, compare the change of speed. Third, compare the depth of water. And then number four, compare the angle of refraction. Your comparison must be on region P and region Q. Okay, all comparison must be referred to region P and region Q. And finally, you have to relate the change of speed of wave to the angle of deviation. Angle of deviation means angle of refraction. So five points, five marks. So how to compare the wavelength? How to compare the change of speed? How to compare the depth of water? And how to compare the angle of refraction in region P and region Q? Okay, so if you highlight the question, you have to make for comparison. Okay, and you have to write one relationship. So how do we compare the wavelength? You can say wavelength of a wave in region P is longer. Okay, wavelength of a wave in region P is longer. Or you can write the other one. Wavelength of wave in region Q is shorter. Okay. Second, now compare the change of speed. Okay, in both cases, the wave propagate from deep region to shallow region. Okay, deep region to shallow region P and deep region from to shallow region Q. So uh, what will happen to the change of speed? In which region the change of speed will be greater? Or in which region the change of speed will be smaller? Okay, that is the meaning of this. Uh, statement. So what we can write, the change of speed of wave in region P is smaller. Okay, or you can say the change of speed of wave in region Q is larger or greater. Right? Okay, and then number three, compare the depth of water. So look at P and Q. Which one has a greater depth? So depth of water in region P is greater. Or you can say depth of water in region Q is smaller. All right. And then number four is to compare the angle of refraction. So you can refer back to the diagram for the angle of refraction. You can see obviously angle of refraction in diagram P is smaller. Okay. Or you can say angle of refraction in region Q is greater or larger or bigger. And finally, relate the change of speed to the angle of deviation or angle of reflection. So look at the second point and the fourth point. So what happened? Change of speed smaller angle of refraction or deviation smaller. So we just rewrite back. The smaller the change in speed, the smaller the angle of deviation or vice versa. Or you can say uh, when the change of speed is smaller, so the angle of uh, deviation is smaller or the other way around. Okay. So this is how we tackle for these five marks question. Comparison and relationship. Okay, any further question on this? Anyone? Anything you are not clear with this question? Okay, if you have no further question, we proceed with the next part. Okay, now B. Okay, this is another application of sound wave. Now sound wave. Okay, diagram 11.3 shows a father standing on a balcony calling his son for lunch. Okay, by using physics concept, explain why his son could not hear him clearly. Four marks. 
So this is a diagram related to this question. So this is where the father is at on top level of a uh, building. And this, uh, his son is uh, at the ground. He tried to call his son to come for lunch. But uh, sudden, the son cannot hear the father. He cannot hear his father's calling. So why? What causes this situation? Uh, so if you remember, in your module, we have reflection of sound wave during day and during night. Uh, so this explanation, you can refer to reflex, uh, refraction of sound wave at the day. Okay, so what happened? Point number one, at day, what happened to the air temperature? Air temperature is higher or warmer at the lower altitude mean at the ground, the air layer is warmer. Okay, uh, sound wave refracted away. Uh, satu maka, one mark, waste one. Okay, how to get four marks? First, you tell what happened at day. Air temperature is higher or warmer at the ground or at the lower altitude. Or you can say air at lower ground is less dense. Warmer air at the ground, less dense. Point number one. So what happened? So now the wave refract away from the normal. So above the water, uh, the air is cooler, means denser, which means sound wave is moved from denser medium towards a less dense medium. So what will happen? It will refract away from normal. Or you can say sound wave refract away from the ground. Okay, uh, waste one, that will be mark number two. Okay. Then what happened next? So the sound wave will move upwards. It will propagate upwards. Okay. And finally, so no sound wave reach his sun on the ground. Since all sound wave has been refracted upwards. So it doesn't reach the sun. No sound wave reach his sound who stand on the ground. So this is the explanation for four marks okay so you state one by one uh, show the sequence what happened first what comes next and finally what will be the effect okay uh, so in order to get uh, the four marks okay next question c okay question c is a long essay question okay we have diagram 11.4 it shows a wireless router. Okay, I believe you are familiar with this thing, wireless router. Okay, if you have a Wi-Fi uh, wi connection or Unify uh, connection at home, you can see this, uh, this thing, wireless router. As an electronic engineer, so imagine you are an electronic engineer and you are required to design a new wireless router using an appropriate physics concept. So you have to do a modification on the wireless router so it can be transmitted data efficiently. Okay, that is the purpose, to transmit data efficiently. Okay, so uh, this is an open response question. It doesn't guide you, okay? And I'm afraid uh, this is the new pattern of the question in uh, in in these two, three years back, okay, recently. Uh, so they didn't guide you. What do you need to write? So you have to be prepared for this type of question. It is an open-end question. So you can write any uh, thing on the modification. So you have to think smart. What do you need to write, okay? So it's quite tough because you have to think on your own what modification has to be done. So what can we do? As usual, you build your table first. Modification and explanation. Okay, so first, what we can think? Where to place? Where to place the wireless router? Okay, so this one you must think out of the box. You have to think what modification must be done. First is the place, where to keep it. So we place it at the high place, the location of the wireless router. Why? Place it at a high place so that 
the signal is not blocked. Signal transmitted widely or more signal can be transmitted. Okay, remember our purpose is so that the wireless router uh, work efficiently in transmitting signal. So first you can talk about the position, location, where to place. Second, what else can you think? Type of wave. So what type of wave suitable to be used by the wireless router? Okay, so we are using, we are using radio wave for wireless router we are using radio wave okay why using radio wave so it can uh, diffract easily okay or less disturbance this is the reason for using radio wave okay it can diffract easily and less disturbance okay mean it can transmit to the whole part of your houses next the frequency of the wave okay another modification frequency of the wave use a high frequency wave okay why so transmit more signal at once transmit signal further distance or has high energy okay frequency high Okay, next characteristic or modification. Then you can talk about the man, uh, the density of the material used, the density of the wireless router. Use a material of low density so that the router will be light. So the mass will be reduced, portable, easy to uh, change the place, easy to uh, easy to carry, portable. Okay, can be relocated to a new places then what's next uh, in it already type of radio wave uh, type of wave radio wave okay now a uh, number of aerial fix okay number of aerial fix okay you can use more than one aerial the diagram show you the router uh, the wireless router only use one aerial so actually you can fix more than one aerial for what to produce stronger signal okay or to transmit more signal or to have wider coverage okay uh, the set point at the center is repeated so this one uh, you can uh, ignore i show you uh, earlier in the previous slide so here we have a uh, low density material and use uh, more than one number of aerial okay so all the reason is to make the wireless router more efficient in transmitting signals okay so you have to be prepared for this kind of essay it doesn't guide you what do you have what aspect you have to write so you have to think uh, wisely uh, think out of the box what are all the possibilities you can write so you just write actually you can write more than five as well okay uh, because uh, it is considered as an open response questions. Okay, can travel long distance, yes. At signal tower at surrounding. Okay, signal tower at surrounding. Do you think it's logic to do that, William? At signal tower at surrounding. Okay, your modification must be on the router only. Okay, uh, on the router. So I don't think so at signal tower and surrounding is a, um, I think it's not a possible thing to do. Okay, so you, even though it is uh, open, but uh, your answer must be a logic one. Okay, uh, so I think that's one is not acceptable for this one. Any other, anyone else want to, Okay, want to share your opinion? Wayson says sound wave refracted away. Uh, which one you refer to this? Glass fiber of wire. This is wireless. Okay, wireless router. So we don't need any glass fiber of wire. Okay, can travel long distance. Okay, that is for what? Uh, for what modification can travel long distance? Uh, that one is uh, use radio wave can, can accept. Okay, the reason can travel long distance. 
put router at white place, uh, an open place, yes. So it will be uh, less block, uh, less disturbance, not block by any obstacle. Uh, that one is accepted. Put router at white place, mean at an open area. Okay, what else? Any other answer? Any more people want to share your answer? Okay, so this is a few uh, examples. Okay, it, uh, if you have another uh, answer, you can share, okay, in the chat uh, session here. Okay, so we proceed with question 12. Okay, question 12. Okay, now question 12 is on electricity. So we have finished with wave. Okay, so now let's proceed with question 12, electricity. So you are given diagram 12.1. It shows an electric toaster with specification of 240 volt, 1.8 kilowatt. Okay, 240 volt, 1.8 kilowatt. Okay, and then you have diagram 12.1b. It shows a cross sectional for its heating element okay so this is how the toaster looks from the outside okay diagram a and in diagram b they show you the cross-sectional for the heating element inside okay so what are the questions that follow first what is the meaning for 240 volt 1.8 kilowatt so what does it mean 240 volt 1.8 kilowatt. How can you write this? 240 volt, 1.8 kilowatt. Anyone? What does this uh, statement mean? 240 volt, 1.8 kilowatt. Anyone would like to respond? Okay, so what is this refers to? You can say 1.8 kilojoule of energy dissipated in one second when connected to a power supply of 240 volt. Okay, or you can say 1.8 kilojoule of energy produced in one second when operate at 240 volt. Uh, this is the meaning by this statement. Okay, kilowatt is the power, so it shows 1.8 kilojoule of energy dissipated. Dissipated mean uh, generate, okay, in one second when connected to power supply of 240 volt. Or you can write the second, 1.8 kilojoule of energy produced in one second, must mention the time, in one second when operate at 240 volt okay uh, so this question is familiar when talking about uh, electrical devices okay second b now you have to calculate the energy used by the toaster if it is used for two hours per day so how to find energy use by the toaster if it is used for two hours per day Okay, talking about electrical devices or electrical appliances, the energy is right, is written in kilowatt hour. Okay, please remember that. Okay, energy used for any electrical appliances is written in kilowatt hour. So how to find kilowatt hour? What is the formula to find electrical energy class? What formula we apply here? Electrical energy equal to? So electrical energy E equal to PT, power multiplied by time. Remember, okay, the power of the electrical devices multiply with the time of operation. Okay, and I just said, uh, I said to you just now, the unit is kilowatt hour. So what is the power? It is given 1.8 kilowatt 
and the time is in hour. So multiply by two hour. So the energy used is 3.6 kilowatt hour. KWH. 3.6 kilowatt hour. Okay, now I want you to do for B2. Okay, those who are not doing yet, I want you to try this question now. B2. Find the electricity bill need to be paid by the customer in the month of July if one unit energy costs 22 cents. Okay, I give you a few seconds or a few minutes to settle with this. Okay, find the bill the customer need to be paid in July 2019 if one unit energy costs him or her 22 cents. Okay. So yeah, try first before I show you the answers. If you did it early or you're finished, uh, then you can share your answer here. So the bill must be in Ringgit Malaysia. Okay, anyone done? Okay, if you're done, you can share your answer in the live chat. How much bill need to be paid by the customer in the month of July? Hey, are you done class? How to find the cost? Okay, so bef uh, first before you deal with this question, this is what you must know. Okay, one unit of energy is equal to one kilowatt hour. Okay, one unit energy equal to one kilowatt hour. Okay, Dylan say 24 ringgit 55 cent. Okay, later we'll check. Okay, who else? Uh, waste one also 25, uh, 24, 55. Okay, so far we have two person with the same answer. Okay, so one unit energy equal to one kilowatt hour. So you have to find how much energy is used. The total energy is 3.6 kilowatt hour, which we calculate earlier. Okay, since it used two hours per day. Okay, so multiply by 31. In July, we have 31 days. Okay, in the month of July, we have 31 days. And every day, he used the same amount of energy, 3.6 kilowatt hour. So by this, the total energy use is 111.6 kilowatt hour. So you multiply with the cost for one unit. Okay, so this will give you 111.6 times 0 0.22 cent in ringgit is 0 0.22. So the cost in RM is 24.55 ringgit. Okay, congratulations for those who get it right. Weiswan, Dylan. Okay, very good. Okay, I hope the rest also you can get the same. Okay, first you must find total energy use in that month. So you have to look carefully which month is given. If they give you April, okay, means the day is 30. Number of days is 30, okay. 
uh, if they give you February, then how to know? 28 or 29, uh, which one? Uh, so you don't have to remember. They are very seldom to give you month of February. Okay, unless they state February and that is a year of leap. Uh, but very seldom they give you month of February. Uh, it is uh, uh, another month other than February. So you have to uh, determine either the number of days is 30 or 31. All right. Uh, so the total cost again, 24 ringgit 55 cent. Okay. And now we proceed with question C. Okay, by referring to the following aspects, give suggestion how the toaster can toast bread faster and can last longer. So you have to highlight the purpose. So we have to do some modification on the toaster. So now it can toast bread faster in a shorter period. And also the toaster can be last longer. So they give you three aspects. First, the wire heating elements. What type of wire heating elements is suitable to be used? And give the reason. Second, the thickness of the heating elements. Okay, better to be thick or better to be thin. Okay, and then the melting point of the heating elements. Better to be high or better to be low. So what do you say? Uh, Wei Liang, Ye, uh, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, uh, 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 that uh, for the February, is it? Are you refer to that? Okay, so then you have to check either that year is uh, leap year or not. But as I mentioned, you don't have to worry. Normally, they don't give you a February, a month of February to calculate the uh, billing cost for electricity. Okay, what type of wire heating element is suitable to be? Remember, we are, uh, we want to make a heating Okay, a heating wire, a heating element. So what type of wire we normally use as a heating element? The keyword is that. Copper wire. Any other answer? Any other answer other than, heat, uh, other than copper wire? If you remember, I have mentioned you for a few times in the class. Uh, for this type of question, you have to alert if we are designing a heating elements, okay? It means that the elements must have a higher resistance. So it supply more heat. Okay, the function of the heater is to heat. So the heat is coming from the high resistant. High resistant wire will produce more heat for the heating purposes. Okay, uh, high resistance. Okay, so uh, another answer here, high resistance. Okay, so let's check for the answer. So for wire heating elements, the type, actually the type. So we are choosing either nichrome or Tungsten. This is normally the two type of heating elements we use either for iron, okay, in kettle or in a water heater, nichrome or tungsten. Okay, yes, uh, Arif. Okay, the reason is, yes, high resistance. So high resistance, Arif, you can write it on the reason, okay, on the reason part. So we choose nichrome or tungsten because these two type of wire, they are high resistance wire. Or you can say also they have high melting point. Or also because it does not oxidize at high temperature. So it will be last longer. Okay, so this is the reason of choosing nichrome or tungsten wire. Okay. Again, please be aware for heating element, it must have a high resistance. Okay. Second, how about the thickness? So the thickness of the heating element. So which thickness will give you a high resistance? So can you see it now? Uh, so which one, thick or thin, will give you a high resistance? So what do you say about the thickness, class? 
So, Weiliang, it's not copper wire, okay? For heating element, copper wire, it's not used because copper wire, it has a low resistance. So, it will supply less heat. So, less heat is not good for heating purposes. So, Arif say it is thin, okay? What about the rest? What do you say? The thickness of the heating element. Dylan say C. Okay, I, uh, I think you can see my point now. Okay, so answer is thin. Okay, the thickness is thin or you can write low. Okay, since it's mentioned about thickness. So, the thickness low means the wire is thin. Uh, so, what? Again, the reason? Yes, to produce high resistance. Okay, to produce high resistance or higher heating effect. Okay, or you can say produce more heat. Uh, that one also accepted for the reason. Okay, now third, how about the melting point for the heating elements? Uh, this one will be uh, easy. Melting point of the heating element, definitely it should be, should be high or low, heating element. Uh, so this one definitely, yes, high. Okay, high melting point. Yes, melting point is higher. Okay, for what? Why must, must choose a wire with a high melting point? So that uh, it is not melt easily. It able to withstand high temperature. Yes, uh, the heating point, uh, the melting point must be high. So it does not melt easily or you can say it can withstand high temperature. Remember, do not write last longer for the reason because it is already stated in the question. Okay, remember, anything stated in the question, you cannot rewrite them back as your reasons of explanation. Okay, that is the, uh, the technique of answering uh, the question for uh, physics. Any problem or any question asking on the reason, you never mention about uh, the purposes of doing the modification given in the statement or in the questions. Okay, so I hope you are clear for that. For heating element, remember we must choose a wire with a higher resistance. So to give more heat for the heating purposes. Okay, so I think we have come to the final question for today, question number 13. Okay, again, for those who are outside of Pagan Jaya, uh, actually you can get the module for this, uh, you can get the module which we discussed in this lesson in the video description. Okay, I have put the link there so you can download the question. Uh, from there and this is actually the second discussion on this module in the previous classes I have discussed question one until question seven so today we continue with question eight until question 13 and don't forget class uh, next Friday uh, we will discuss another two questions left, question 14 and question 15 and I will continue with the final module, module 3 uh, so module three will be consists of questions from electromagnetism, electronics, and radioactivity. Okay, uh, the final module which we are going to discuss for this PDPR lesson. Okay, so uh, let's see what do we have in this question 13. Okay, uh, if we repeat the same reason, is it okay? Yes. Okay, sometimes the reason is uh, it's the same. It's the same reason. Okay, it is accepted. Okay, uh, so you can say uh, high resistance and for the type of wire, reason high resistance and for the thickness also because of high resistance. Or you can write uh, the second option, higher heating effect. Okay, so no problem at all. Okay, Arif. Okay, so question 13, so what do we have here? Diagram 13.1 uh, on the left and diagram 13.2 on the right. Okay, it shows three identical filaments. So you can highlight three identical filament, but mark 6 volt, 12 watt. Arrange in two different ways, connect to a battery of 6 
volt. So if you look at the arrangement of this bulb, okay, in the left, on the left, 13.1, can you say, uh, can you, uh, can you state what type of arrangement is this on the left? And the diagram on the left, uh, right side, 13.2, what type of arrangement of bulb shown? Which one is series? Which one is parallel? Okay, thank you, Arif. Okay. So 13.1 series or parallel, 13.2 series or parallel. So first and foremost, you must understand the arrangement of bulb shown. Uh, so 13.1, what kind of arrangement show that? Series or parallel class. And how about 13.2? So 13.1 is a series arrangement. Okay. And in 13.2, they are arranged in parallel, yes. Okay, on the left, 13.1 is series. On the right, 13.2 is parallel arrangement. Okay, now, the first question. Again, what is meant by 6 volt, 12 watt? Okay, like the previous question. 6 volt, 12 watt. What does it refer to? Uh, yes, William, uh, right, is, uh, right is series. 13.1 is series. On the left is series. 13.2 is parallel. Okay. 13.1 uh, on the left is series. 13.2 on the right uh, uh, is parallel. Okay. William, please look carefully. Okay. Left is series. 13.1. Right is parallel. 13.2. Okay. So question A, what is meant by 6 volt, 12 watt? Okay, so again, how do we write this? 12 joule of energy, 12 watt. Okay, 12 joule of energy dissipated in one second, produced or generated in one second. Must mention the time, one second, when connected to a power supply of 6 volt. Okay, or you can say again, 12 joule of energy produced in one second, okay, when operate at 6 volt. Uh, so this is how we write uh, the definition for a 6 volt, 12 watt. Okay, 12 joule of energy dissipated in one second, must mention one second, connected to uh, power supply of 6 volt, or you can choose the second statement, 12 joule of energy produced in one second when uh, the device is operate at 6 volt. Okay? So next, uh, this is the third answer you can write. When the voltage supply is 6 volt, the power produced is 12 watt. Uh, so when you mention about the power, you don't have to mention the time. But you mentioned about the energy, it must stay together with the time one second. Okay, so these are the three options. So you can choose to write which one you are more prefer or comfortable with. Okay. Next, question B. Okay, state the type of circuit in diagram 13.1 and 13.2. So I have asked you earlier, so the diagram in 13.1 is series. Okay, the type, series circuit. Okay, and in diagram 13.2, it shows a parallel circuit. Okay, 13.1 series, 13.2 is parallel. Okay, and then C. Uh, uh, this question also, you, you, uh, you are familiar with it. We used to deal with it before in the school. The bulb in diagram 13.2 uh, are brighter. Then the bulb in diagram 3.1, explain your answer. So this is normal. Normally, the bulb which is arranged in parallel, uh, they will be brighter compared to a bulb which are arranged in series. So what caused this matter? Why the bulb arranged in parallel are brighter compared to a bulb arranged in series okay two marks so how you're going to explain for this class so how to write the explanation first you can talk about the voltage okay 
voltage for each bulb in diagram, uh, it's supposed to be 13.2, sorry. Okay, in diagram 13.2, more than diagram 13.1. Okay, please uh, correct with this answer. It's supposed to be 13.2, more than 13.1. Okay, and then you can talk about the total resistance. Okay, total resistance or the effective resistance. For bulb in parallel, the effective resistance will be less. Okay, so total resistance in diagram 13.2. Sorry, not 8.2. 13.2 is less than uh, in diagram 13.1. Okay, so you can, or you can say also the current flow in each bulb in diagram 13.2 is more than that in diagram 13.1. Uh, the resistance is low. Uh, you, you add a bit at the front the total resistance or the effective resistance, Arif Hamizan. Okay, the effective resistance in parallel is low. Okay, so which means higher current is flowing in each bulb. Uh, so the voltage will be high. Okay, accepted. Okay, so two marks. First, you mention about the total resistance. So it will cause a higher current flow in each bulb. And also you can say the voltage in each bulb for parallel is higher. Okay. So either one for mark one or mark number two, uh, which one you can, you can state first. Either you state the voltage first or you state the effective resistance first or the total resistance okay okay again please uh correct with this diagram it's supposed to be 13.2 and 13.1 okay instead of 8.2 and 8.1 all right okay okay then for question d okay now the resistance of each bulb in diagram 13.1 and 13.2 is 4 ohm okay remember before this they say all bulbs are identical so now it states each bulb has a resistance of 4 ohm. So you can highlight this 4 ohm. Resistance of each bulb, 4 ohm. So here they ask you to find the current flow in each bulb. Okay, 4 marks. Okay, so how to find the current flow in each bulb for diagram 13.1 and for diagram 13.2. Okay, I can I, I give you a few seconds or a few minutes to deal with this question. Four marks mean two marks for for each. Okay, find the current flow in each bulb in diagram 13.1 and diagram 13.2. Okay, for those who have found the answer, you can share with your friends here. Okay, anybody done? Or you still doing? Okay, again, in this question, they give you the resistance of each bulb in diagram 13.1 and 13.2 is 4 ohm. So determine the current flow in each bulb for both diagram 13.1 and 13.2. So are you done, class? Okay, so let's check for 13.1. Uh, So first, what you need to do, you find the total resistance, OK? 
Okay, the total resistance uh, in, okay, I can see some of your friends uh, put the answer here. 13.1 is 12. Uh, then Min Swan say uh, 12, 4 over 3. And Arif say 13.1, uh, half, 0 0.5. So, rem uh, so uh, remember in this question, we are determining the current flow in each bulb. So how to find current first, you must find the total resistance in both circuit. So for 13.1, it is a series, okay? It is a series, so the total resistance is 12 volt. Okay, we have three bar over there. So the resistance for each bar is four. So four plus four plus four is 12 volt. So how to find the current flow? So V... We use the Ohm's law formula, so I equal to V divided by R. V, the voltage supplied by the battery is 6 volt. So multiply, uh, sorry, divide with the total resistance 12. So the current flow is 0 0.5 ampere. Okay, 0 0.5 ampere. And remember, for series connection, the amount of current flow in each bulb are the same. So in each bulb, 0 0.5 ampere of current flow. Okay. Uh, Dylan say 13.1, 0 0.5, 13.2, 4.5 ampere. Okay. So now let's check for 13.2. So I hope you are clear how to find the current flow in series circuit 13.1. Find the total or the effective resistance first. And then you apply the uh, V equal to IR. Okay, the Ohm's law formula, and then only you determine the final current flow, 0 0.5 ampere. Remember, never put your answer in fraction. Okay, uh, this is a very important reminder for you. In physics, you cannot place your final answer in fraction, even though it is correct, 1 over 2. Okay, it must always in decimal Places. So please be aware with this. Okay, so 13.1, 0 0.5 ampere. Okay, so let's check for 13.2. Okay, 13.2. So how to find the effective resistance for a parallel? So the formula is 1 over RT. RT in the effective resistance. So total resistance. So 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. Okay, we find the reciprocal. So it will be 3 over 4. So RT will be 4 over 3. Okay, so in decimal places, 1.33 ohm. So again, to find the total current, total current is given by V divided by R. Again, voltage is 6. And the total resistance is 1.33. So you will get total current is 4.5 ampere. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, remember the question. Determine the current flow in each bulb. Okay. That's why I asked you to highlight the information. Current flow in each bulb. So the total current for parallel is 4.5. Since it is parallel, so this 4.5 divide equally into all three. Why divide equally? Because they are all have the same resistance. Uh, so the same amount of current. So 4.5 divide by 3. So in each bar, 1.5 ampere is flowing. Okay, Dylan, it's not 4.5. It is 1.5 in each bar. Okay, 4.5 is a total for parallel. So for each bar, flow 1.5 ampere. Okay, so I hope you are clear now how to find a current flow in a bar for both series and parallel. First and foremost, you must find the effective resistance or the total resistance. And then use the Ohm's law equation and find the current flow in each bulb, either for series or for parallel. Okay, second reminder, again, never place your answer in fraction. Okay, either in paper two or in paper three. 
answer must always in decimal places, not fraction. Okay. Uh, so I guess this is the, uh, we have another more question here. E. Okay, now a student want to design an incubator. So this is application. Okay, a question on application, design an incubator. Barbs are used to heat up the incubator. Uh, this is maybe incubator for chicken or for ducks. Okay, between the circuit in diagram 13.1 and 13.2, so which circuit is the most suitable to be used by the student to heat up the incubator? Uh, so which one do you prefer? Let's say you are the student. You are about to design an incubator. Uh, okay. So which connection is a better choice? Series or parallel connection? And you have to give reason for your answer. Uh, so normally the wiring in our house, okay, the wiring, the electrical wiring in our house, it is uh, made uh, in series or in parallel? Okay, who knows? The wiring system in our house made to be in series or in parallel connection uh, who knows uh, series are you sure which one series or parallel the wiring in our house electrical wiring normally we set up in parallel connection okay so we apply the same concept here in designing the incubator so we choose Circuit diagram 13.2. Parallel connection is a better choice. Why? Why choose parallel instead of series? Uh, Arif say because satu lampu rosak, satu lagi takkan rosak. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, yes, Wei Liang, parallel. Uh, Min Suan, yes, the answer is parallel. Okay. In our house also parallel. So here also we apply parallel. So what is the reason? So that, okay, this question allocate two marks. Mean you have to write at least two reason. You can give more, but don't write less than two reason. Okay, you can give more. So you can say if one bulb blow, uh, rosak blow, another bulb still can function. It doesn't affect because dia boleh, it has another path for the current to be flow. Or uh, you can say, second point, so uh, the, uh, the effective resistance will be low. Okay, less effective resistance. The total resistance in the circuit for parallel will be low, which means more current flow. Okay, so the bulb will be, uh, the circuit will be more uh, efficient. So the first reason, if one bulb is blow, another bulb still can function. And then second, uh, the total effective resistance for parallel is low, which means the bulb will be brighter. Uh, it can glow brighter since more current is flow in each bulb. Okay, so can you see the reason now why parallel is a better choice either to design the incubator or for wiring in our houses? So it won't affect the other bulb when one bulb is broken or blue. Second, the bulb glow brighter. Why brighter? Because the total resistance is lower, so the voltage and higher current flow higher so more brighter the bulb is okay so i guess uh, that's all for today so we have discussed question number one until question number 13 for module two so we have another two question left question 14 and question 15 on electricity uh, so i will give you the third module uh, before this Friday so you can try them first before the class begin and uh, for those who are outside from Bagan Jaya uh, you can get the module after I set up the new broadcast okay and so class how do you find today's question are they tough oh it's quite easy or oh, is it 50 50 
So I hope when you deal with this kind of question in the real SPM, okay, now you are more clear how to uh, work with them, okay, especially on the electricity, uh, how to do with the calculation, and also on wave, okay, what is the explanation for this and that situations. Okay, uh, anything else you would like to ask before I end today's lesson? Okay, so if you have no further, if you have anything arise after this, you can uh, WhatsApp me or tell uh, you can send me a message in WhatsApp or Telegram or WeChat. Okay, anything you can uh, you want to be more clarified with? If you feel shy to ask now, never mind. As usual, you can ask me later, or you can rewatch back this video. You can review back this video to get the full answer for all questions from question 8 until question 13. Okay, thank you also, Ari, for joining us today. That's very kind of you. Okay, okay, class, 5 Akit, 5 Baiduri, and 5 Citrin as well. You please jot down your name in your class for your attendance in the comment of the video after this. And I will uh, prepare... Uh, this slide, uh, I will uh, prepare one uh, one form of PDF, so you can free. You are free to download them if you need to, uh, as it will show the full uh, the full sets of answer for this question. Okay, I won't give you my PDF, uh, my PowerPoint slide. I will convert them into PDF, so easy for you to do the checking later on. Okay, so once I've done, I will paste the link in this video and then you can get it from there. Okay, so I hope that's all for today. Uh, so you can get ready for your next class. I think at Mets, is it? You have on 12. So again, I'll see you this Friday with the third module. Thank you very much and have a pleasant day ahead. Okay, Assalamualaikum for the Muslim. And thank you very much to all. Okay. Uh, Yi Hang, just now you appear one earn. Who else? Uh, Kai Yang, is it you? Jing Jian. Okay. So I hope uh, on Friday, more those who are never responding, uh, please try to be more active. Okay. Share your opinion. Share your answer. Okay. If you get it wrong, then we are here to correct you. Okay. Again, thank you very much to all. Okay, bye bye and see you again soon. Okay, ah uh, tomorrow, ah uh, jangan lupa esok cikgu akan teruskan uh, perbincangan kertas percubaan SPM Terengganu kertas satu. Okay, that one will be conducted in both language BM and BI. Okay, I will continue with uh, question twenty six until question fifty. Ah, uh, so those who are outside from Bagan Jaya also can join. Okay, uh, the link I will send uh, later. Or if you don't want to miss the class, you can uh, subscribe my channel and hit the notification bell. So you will receive a reminder. Kamu akan terima reminder 30 minutes before the uh, the class started. Okay, esok pukul 3 petang. Cikgu akan bincang percubaan Terengganu Ketah 1, soalan 25 hingga soalan 50. Okay, so those from Bagan Jaya and outside from Bagan Jaya also can join since it will be conducted in dual language BM dan BI. Okay, so again, uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much for your warm effort. So I wish you all the best in your SPM. See you again tomorrow and see you again next Friday. Okay, bye everyone.